Here's a, a eukaryotic cell, uh, a sort of stylized diagram bit. Um, and some of the features in that you will uh, be familiar with, some, some you won't be. Okay, so let's just, uh, this is obviously the nucleus here. Um, and this is the cell membrane. Right, let's just talk about one of the, the nucleus. We know what that is. It contains the chromosomes, which are made with DNA and protein. Uh, the DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones and packaged. Most of the time you can't see the chromosomes, they're um, extended and then they, sh um, they kind of wrap up uh, into visible structures, which you can see only during cell division. Um, right now this little dark spot here is called the nucleolus. Uh, and a lot of these, these structures, they were, they were seen down microscopes, you know, beginning of the 20th century. People, uh, as microscopes got better, scientists weren't really sure what they were for. Uh, people said, other people said they were something called artifact which means uh, they're man-made. Um, they're, not, they're, they're not really in the cell. It's due to the way that the, the uh, material has been prepared to look at under the microscope, or it's just uh, a, an optical illusion, or it's, it's not something that's real. Anyway, the nucleolus was dismissed as an artifact at first, but gradually it became apparent that it is present in a lot of cells. And later on, um, it, it, people realize that it is to do with ribosome, which we'll talk about in a minute, ribosome um, development. We'll talk about ribosomes in a bit. Um, okay, now the cell membrane. Now we now should know that it's made up of a phospholipid bilayer and incorporated into that are proteins. So this is the, the lipid bilayer. Which is very hydrophobic, and so no water is going to be water is going to be able to pass into the cell. No water soluble things like glucose and sodium ions and potassium ions can get through the lipid bilayer. And uh, every now and again, in the you have a lot of proteins. Okay, and these proteins, embedded proteins, have um, a few different functions. They may exist as uh, there may be ion channels. Okay, so it's basically just that you will have a shape like a, like a pipe and it lets maybe sodium ions enter or chloride ions enter or just sodium ions exit depending on the concentration gradient. So a lot of proteins uh, will be ion channels. Um, some of them are not ion channels. They are, um, they, are I, they are ion pumps. So they are pumps which use ATP and they pump out, um, <coughs> in particular, they pump out um, sodium ions, very pump in sodium ions and pump out potassium ions. And we'll do more about that later, so. Um, other, one, other ones are hormone receptors. So if you think about uh, insulin, is a big, pro it's, a, it's a protein. So here's insulin up here. So that comes to a liver cell, right? Insulin makes liver cells um, turn glucose into glycogen. And that's what they're making them do. Now, how does it exert its effects? Because insulin can't pass through the cell membrane. It's much too big for the lipid bilayer. Well, the way in which they, these kind of hormones work is they bind to a receptor. So this could be an insulin receptor. When the hormone binds to that uh, protein, the other end of the, the protein has another job. The other end of the protein has is an enzyme. Okay, so it makes certain chemicals and it will only switch the enzyme on once the insulin binds up here. So this, the, the receptor is how the, the presence of the insulin on the outside of the cell is transmitted onto the inside of the cell. So there's just a few different things that, um, that uh, membrane proteins may do. Um, 
any other jobs as well, which you come across during the, the as the course progresses. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that now. Uh, so we've talked about um, membranes, but if you look inside this cell, um, you can see there's a system, all this stuff here, this is internal membranes, all the blue. It's phospholipid bilayers inside the cell. Okay, so now how is that arranged? Well, this, um, what, what's that doing? Well, for example, um, imagine you have here, you have a little insulin receptor. So I'll draw it in a different color. Here's an insulin receptor. And it binds insulin. <clears throat> right, that's going to carry on <coughs> stimulating the cell forever and ever. So what happens eventually is after a, after a a short period of time that uh, receptor will get internalized into the cell it will move into the cell and how about just draw so it's now there's the receptor with the insulin attached and eventually that's going to go into a little piece of membrane completely separate that's a now an internal piece of membrane. And that, that insulin uh, receptor can be recycled. The insulin's broken down. And then the, the receptor is returned back to the membrane. So we can see that uh, the cell membrane is in, it's in a continual state of flux. It's, 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 um, there's, there's tr it's called membrane traffic. So there's proteins move, being moved towards the membrane uh, from the inside of the cell, proteins being moved away from the membrane to the inside of the cell. Uh, it's, a, it's in a continual state of flux. And so the, what the cell membrane will be never be the same from one hour to the next. Okay, now, uh, very often when you look at cells, not always, but you can see, see this big blue thing made up of layers and it's called the Golgi body, or sometimes called the Golgi apparatus, or sometimes just the Golgi. It's named after the scientist who saw it, first of all, back in the late 19th century. Uh, cool. um, and at first, it was another one of these things. People thought it was artifact. Um, wasn't really there. It's just the way he, was, the way he prepared his slides. But more and more people saw it and began to realize that it was present in a lot of cells. Not all cells, but it's present in a lot of cells. And the Golgi body, it kind of, it's, it's thought to, it's made up of internal membrane, all those blue layers are internal membrane, and it coordinates membrane traffic. So things going to the cell membrane quite often uh, come from the Golgi body. And you can see how I try to draw these little bits of membrane here, budding off like that they'll bud off and then they'll move through the cytoplasm and then fuse with the cell membrane when they get here they'll kind of fuse with that and then you get a new bit of blue membrane that they put there so the goggy body is in, involved in coordinating that um, this other bit of membrane which i've drawn here well quite often the membrane is called the it's called the endoplasmic reticulum Sort of weird Victorian words come from Latin. Endo inside the cytoplasm, endoplasmic reticulum just means like, a, like fibers. I think it means originally, but it's not really fibers. It's bits of membrane. And this bit I've drawn here would be called rough endoplasmic reticulum. Sorry. This is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as R E R. And the reason why it's rough is those little blobs on it, these are called ribosomes. You can't see ribosomes and way too small to see with the, uh, with the naked eye. You can, you know, with the naked eye, with the light microscope, they can be seen with an electron microscope just about. Um, people have worked out the structure of, microsome, of ribosomes and they're actually made up of um, 
I made it from two units. I'll draw it in a different color. They're made up of a small unit and a big unit. And they're actually made up of RNA, called ribosomal RNA, and protein. And their job is, they, it's the site of protein synthesis. So it's in other words, it's where amino acids are joined together. And what happens is the, the when you, it's a whole separate topic, so I won't go into it now, but uh, involves another RNA molecule and an mRNA, and then you get a chain of, these are the amino acids and the protein all being joined together. It's like a little machine, and it's sort of adding on one, and then that protein is moving out as it's been made on the ribosome. There are, there are <coughs> lots and thousands of tens of thousands of ribosomes in cells. Um, cells are always making proteins. Um, and very often they can be found in the cytoplasm or they can be found stuck on the, the membranes here. And that will be the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, you see lots of this stuff. Um, you see lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum. in active cells, in cells making lots of protein. So for example, the plasma cell, which you talked about, which well, you may have heard of, plasma, cell, plasma cells make antibodies. It's a kind of white blood cell. They have got a very, they've got a very well-developed system of rough endoplasmic reticulum because they're making a lot of protein. They're making the immunoglobulin, the antibody, and that's the cell is secreting that all the time. Also, if you think of a cell which secretes a lot of protein, it might be um, a pancreatic cell, which is making a lot of amylase enzyme or lipase enzyme. They'd have a very well-developed rough endoplasmic reticulum. Whereas if you looked at a cell like a fat cell in fat adipose tissue, they don't really do anything uh, except they just sit there and store fat. There's not, there's only a little bit of sort of background housekeeping protein synthesis going on there. So they wouldn't have lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum. <coughs> okay, so now onto these little, oh, before we move on to little red blobs, let's just talk about these little blue membrane vesicles. These are called lysosomes. And these are little membrane vesicles, so it's a bit of membrane and inside I draw a little green stuff in here. And the green stuff inside, it contains uh, um, degrading enzymes. So that will, e.g. such as proteases. Uh, they, <laughs> so they contain enzymes which will digest protein. Uh, they, lysosomes, uh, present in large quantities because they're quite prominent in phagocytic cells. You remember what a phagocytic cell is, a cell which does phagocytosis, uh, which um, <coughs> ingests foreign materials like bacteria and kills them. So they contain large amounts of um, um, lysosomes. The lysosomes, once the thing's been um, phagocytized, phagocytosed, they fuse with the cell membrane release their contents and kill the thing in there that's been phagocytosed. So I just draw that in a little diagram. So here we have a cell like a macrophage, for example. There's a macrophage. Um, here is a bacteria. Okay, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the cell membrane is going to engulf that bacteria or go around it like that eventually it's completely engulfed there it is in there and then a lysosome draw in blue will come and that will fuse with that and it releases its hydrolytic enzymes which is done in green there into that um, <coughs> into that uh, compartment and that will help kill the bacteria so but it's not just phagocytes um, that have lysosomes, it's lots of other kinds of cells as well, or most other cells. 
uh, and the, the lysosomes may be involved in degrading their own proteins. Right, now, these little red things here. Right, these are, you can't, you can just about see them with a light microscope. You can't see any structure. They just like, look like little dots with an with electron microscope. You can see them, and they're called mitochondria. And they are the site of ATP synthesis. So uh, what happens is glucose undergoes some reactions in the cytoplasm, uh, but not all of the reactions. And then those, uh, some of the products of the broken down glucose pass into the mitochondria, where there's a lot more chemical reactions um, and ATP is made. And also that is where the site is where the oxygen is used up and the oxygen in the mitochondria it's not converted into carbon dioxide it's converted into water okay <clears throat> so now if you look at my if you look at mitochondria in with a light an electron microscope they're about the same size as a bacteria and that uh, is a clue to where they've come from uh, the now believed is that the 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 mitochondria were originally a bacteria which is undergoing a symbiotic relationship which underwent a symbiotic relationship with the eukaryotic cell now a symbiotic relationship is like a bit like being a parasite except both animals get something out of it um, so it's sort of, you know early on in evolution some uh, prokaryotic cell was formed in a symbiotic relationship with the eukaryotic cell and that's what mitochondria are now if you look at the mitochondria the you see you've got two membranes got outer membrane and inner membrane the inner membrane has got lots of it's like the surface area is very com it's high surface area because the membranes are convoluted and that it's actually the membrane where the um the inner membrane that is the site of all those reactions where ATP is generated. And then the ATP is used by the rest of the cells. So the ATP has got to get out of the mitochondria. Um, now, another piece of evidence that tends to suggest that mitochondria were, uh, they are, come from a, pro, a prokaryote form the symbiotic relationship. There are some genes, there are some, there's a, back, there's a mitochondrial chromosome, I just put there, a little black thing. The chromosome there, made of DNA. It's a circular chromosome, like you find in bacteria and prokaryotes, uh, and it does contain a few genes, and those genes are involved in making some of the proteins that you find inside a mitochondria, and you don't find anywhere else in the cell. So that um, that is another piece of evidence. Another piece of evidence is that mitochondria also contain ribosomes for protein synthesis. And these ribos ribosomes, the ribosomes are, are in prokaryotics and eukaryotic cells are different. And these are the prokaryotic types. They're a bit smaller than the eukaryotic. So again, it's, it's pretty clear that really that mitochondria have come from that symbiotic relationship. Right, now most of these features um, refer to plant cells as well. So you get a Golgi apparatus in plant cells, you get nucleolus, you get mitochondria, you get membrane trafficking and, and so on. So I won't repeat all that, but let's just do some of the unique features of plant cells, So, which you know from GCSE. So plant cells, so here, I draw my plant cell. Right in the middle, you get, right, there's the nucleus. You also get a vacuole around the outside which you don't get in eukaryotes in, in animal cells anyway. This is the cellulose cell wall, in green, and that gives it rigidity. Plant cells are a lot more kind of robust than animal cells. Uh, they can't burst during osmosis because they've got the cell wall to stop that happening. Animal cells, if you put them, if you put animal cells into water, they will just burst because of the water will enter by osmosis. Plant cells won't. Um, You've got a nucleus, of course, and you've got this in the middle, which is a vacuole, which is, um, there's not much in there in the way of proteins. It's mostly dissolved ions and things. 
But of course, in plant cells, you will also, if, it, if they're not found in the ground, you'll find these things, which of course I'm trying to show is a chloroplast. Now, chloroplasts are very similar to mitochondria. It's thought that they rise, it was, they, they look like prokaryotic organisms that formed a symbiotic relationship with the plant cell. Chloroplasts are incredibly, well, they're not similar to mitochondria, too, but they, there's sort of, there's a lot of key features that they share. Chloroplasts also make ATP, but they make that ATP not by uh, breaking down glucose, glucose, they make it by photosynthesis. And uh, then that ATP is used by other parts of the chloroplast to turn, to, to turn other substances into sugars. So they use the energy in the ATP to synthesize sugars. Um, again, chloroplasts also contain their own DNA, um, and that's prokaryotic type DNA. So they probably came from a symbiotic relationship um, also. Okay, so that, that lesson really then, it is, it, you, the, uh, it's kind of the thing that's much easier to flesh out as you go through the course. You'll come across these features, you know, you do loads more about mitochondria, do more about ribosomes, do more about the nucleus, um, about the importance of membranes. Um, so it's a bit of a, uh, well, trying to do it at the start of the course is a bit difficult, but it gives you an overview of the uh, important uh, features of a cell.